What's up everyone, Thrall's Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Neck, and I have our first album review of the year 2022. I was super excited to get back to reviews, and I was actually super excited because there was something coming out that I really wanted to review in the early part of January, and I am talking about the new album from Nocturnal Graves, An Outlaw's Stand. This comes out on the 7th of January on Season of Mist Records, actually their underground activist imprint, this band formed in 2004 in Melbourne, Australia. Again, this is their fourth album overall. Actually, their last album, Titan, was on our first year end list in 2018. I love that album. I think it's fucking brilliant, hence the excitement about doing this one. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is a blackened death thrash or thrashy blackened death metal. There's thrash metal, there's black metal, and there's death metal, and it's all kind of thrown together, and it's extreme as fuck. But this band also features current and former members of Destroyer 666, Razor of Occam, Denouncement Pyre, and Coffin Lust. And all of those bands I actually own stuff by, and almost all of them seem centered around one key figure in the Australian black metal slash death metal slash thrash metal scene, Jaro Raphael, or as he is known on here as Nuclear Exterminator. He is the drummer, guitarist, bassist, and he does all the lead vocals on this. And he's also the guy that mixed and mastered this. He is also one of the main guys behind MPS Baptism and again, a litany of other projects out there in Australia in terms of more, I guess, black metal centric stuff, but it definitely creeps into death metal and thrash metal. This guy's just all over the place and this is probably the main band I know him for. Now, one of the cool things about this band is actually drawing from three different separate subgenres with death metal, thrash metal, and black metal you get really cool combinations of those cells, or you get sort of a homogenized sound of all of them blended together to the point where you can't say it's one or the other, it is literally that blend. But with any band that is a fusion of a multitude of different subgenres, you're gonna hear certain songs kind of take over one subgenre in particular while the others play a backseat and, you know, kind of a switch off all throughout. The opening two tracks, Death to Pigs and Command for Conflict, definitely have more of a black metal feel like this is definitely a lot of like second wave stuff but also like more melodic black metal slash black and death metal definitely a lot of dissection and necrophobic in there but also i would say like dark throne circa blaze of the northern sky a lot of those elements in there but mixed in with all the sinister black metal riffs you get a lot of really cool thrashy leads in there and there's a certain kind of energy on this album that kind of just screams thrash metal. Especially on Command for Conflict, there are loads of machine gun little chugs kind of breaking up like more dissonant atmospheric black metal riffs. And the vocals definitely take on a more black metal sound too. They're more of like that kind of echoey shriek into the cold void. I mean, I know it's not that cold in Australia. It can get cold there, but it is mostly a desert full of very, very venomous things and sharks crocodiles. That pretty much concludes almost everything I know about Australia. They have killer bands and killer animals. And that's not killer animals as in, well, those are really cool animals. Those are killer animals as in they will fucking kill you. Now going through this, I was definitely comparing this to the last one. Again, I was a big fan of Titan. And this is a little bit different. I thought Titan was a little bit more polished and I think there was more focus on melody on that one. Not saying that the melodies aren't there, but this is definitely more raw and gritty like their first two albums from the bloodline of Cain and Satan's Cross. Those albums are evil and gritty as hell, more raw, more in your face, and that is kind of what we're back to here. This is almost kind of a balance between those early albums and the last one, Titan. It kind of finds this nice little balance between very catchy riffs really nice pronounced melodies that are, well, creepy and evil because this is still black metal centric, and more diverse songwriting. This album is really all over the place. It has an interesting flow to it. Again, sometimes you will get a more complex song that kind of apes one particular subgenre, again, like black metal early on. But when you get down to songs like Across the Atron and Law of the Blade, all of a sudden the death metal takes over. And death metal is kind of interesting on here because it's a little bit more groovy. Like they like to do slower, big death metal parts. Like granted, there's definitely fast sections on here that scream black and death metal, but it kind of has that black metal feel to it where they're just playing a lot of those, you know, creepy, dissonant tremolo riffs. In Law of the Blade and Across the Atron, the tremolos are lower. And I think there's a few more slower, sludgier riffs in there. And the solos definitely take on a very 
morbid angel like feel. If I was to take a guess as to what the ingredients were in here, I would say there's a lot of early morbid angels, specifically altars of madness, possessed seven churches, and then a fair amount of, again, second wave black metal mixed in there. When it comes down to thrash metal, it's definitely more on the sinister side. So you could definitely still say possessed is in that, but also I would say some early Slayer in there, like pretty much hell awaits specifically, which definitely comes out in the song Ruthless Fight, which is a thrashy banger and probably one of the most straightforward songs on here. It is fast from the first second to the last second. There is like a little groovy breakdown in there, but it is mostly about just the thrashy intensity in there. And the riffs on the song are played at Vader levels of intensity. Maybe even Deicide too. I don't know, I feel like they just went for every fast evil band they possibly could and mixed it up and just kind of threw them in a pot, stirred, and then this monstrosity came forth. I'm all for it. For the most part, this is a very fast album. I hope you love Blast Beats because that is a damn good chunk of this. This pretty much moves at the pace of an Angel Corpse album, which if you love Blast Beats and Black and Death Metal and kind of thrash throw in there, you probably like Angel Corpse too. But when it does slow down, it generally slows down to like very epic, distinct riffs. And again, that's I think where the songwriting maturity is really starting to show in these guys. These guys know how to craft some really clever hooks, even throw in some cool melodies here and there, but they know that the overall feel of this should be raw and just grittier than hell. Now, as for complaints about this album, I honestly don't have many. I think the production is excellent for what they're going for. It's raw, but well-produced. I will say that while it leads off very black metal centric, it kind of loses a little bit of that towards the middle of the album. and. You know, it kind of loses a little bit of that sinister dark edge and kind of just goes more for aggressive. Now that's really not much of a knock because I like both feels, but I kind of liked the blend of it. And it does pick up a little bit of that on the title track, especially the opening, which had some portal level sort of dissonant riffs on it, which was like, oh, please don't do that because Portal is still a waking nightmare for me musically. I know people love them, but holy shit, they're fucking terrifying. But that actually turns into a really solid black and death metal song. But again, it kind of shifts around the atmosphere a little bit. I kind of wanted to hear more of that Sinister Edge, but I liked the aggressive stuff too. And like any album that can be a blast beat fest, sometimes songs do run into one another, but I think there's enough stuff in there to sort of break it up, like enough breakdowns, enough distinct leads and distinct melodies, stuff like the absolutely epically evil sounding opening to Law of the Blade, which sounds like a blend of Morbid Angel and Belphegor, or the really cool atmospheric bridge with all sorts of creepy dissonant melodies that are all over Command for Conflict. Again, there's enough stuff to really break it up and actually make these songs stand out. So again, my complaints about this are very minimal. And well, there was a damn good reason I was excited to hear this because I kind of had a feeling this would be a killer album to start off with in terms of 2022 releases, and I was right. This is a killer album, and I'm gonna give it four stars. This might not be as dynamic and melodic as Titan, but I think this just nails it on aggression. Great songwriting, I love the riff work on here. And again, blending three different genres together, black metal, thrash metal, and death metal. Like, they find a really cool homogenized sound in there, and they also do songs that kind of, you know, ape one particular style over the others, and they do it all really well. And I think it's cool that all of the different stuff they bring in there comes off as very classically influenced, like old school bands that were pioneers. They really blended this together and delivered a flat out intense album. That whole thing of them blending those styles makes this a very interesting and fun listen, and it makes it less predictable. You don't really know where they're gonna go because they're blending so many styles. It almost has the appeal of something progressive just in the sense of it being sort of unpredictable. You don't know where it's gonna go next, and I really like that. This album flat out rules. What a killer way to start off 2022. Go out, check this album out. Check out all their stuff. They don't have a bad album in my opinion. All their albums are absolutely killer. And honestly, any of them are a good starting point for this band, so go get this one, go get the other ones. It really won't matter if you're a fan of blackened death metal and blackened thrash metal and black metal and thrashing black metal death, all that shit, whatever. I'm making shit up. You'll be a fan of it, I'm reasonably sure. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all the time. 
We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there'll be a link down below. We're going to get back to putting more stuff up there. Been kind of slow over the holidays, and well, let's be honest, we've been slow for a while in there. We need to correct that. We also, well, we'll have new t shirts for sale. We just got to get them made, but we're going to debut them, and we're very, very happy with uh, the way they look. And there's going to be a whole announcement video for it just because I want to announce these because I'm super excited. But also, I just want to thank you guys once again. Thank you for a whole other year of this. Let's make this year even more metal if that's possible because holy shit. Everyone put out a fucking album last year, but start of this year is already looking pretty good. And I'm happy to kick it off with a killer ass album. So thank you guys once again for watching, and we will catch you later.